Hello, friends. It's Pastor Jane Rowe coming to you from the choir pews here in the chancel area of the sanctuary, giving you a view that the altos normally have from this pew. And just thinking about how much the choir members in particular missing are missing being in their places and blending their voices. The singing together is a, a thing we deeply miss. We read together from Mark's Gospel, the eighth chapter. We are reading verses 27 to 33. This is right smack in the middle of Mark's Gospel, and it is a pivotal moment. It is a hinge in the gospel, uh, a turning point. Let us read with open ears and minds and hearts. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him but turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. In this encounter, Jesus has revealed himself more fully more clearly than ever before. He begins by asking, what are people saying about him? And then he wants to know, what are you saying? What do you believe? And Peter gets it right. He says it boldly and clearly. You are the Messiah, the one sent from God, the one we've been waiting for. Jesus tells them to tell no one, which always confuses us. And yet here, I think it's clear because he goes on to tell them his mission, that he is a Messiah who will undergo suffering and be killed and rise again. He says it quite openly, not in parables so that it might not be understood. He says it plainly, and Peter can't stand it. He rebukes him. What a strong word for the one he just called Messiah, God's chosen one. Peter rebuked him. And Jesus rebuked Peter, saying that he was focused on human things, not divine things. Human understandings, not divine revelation. Peter gets who Jesus is, and yet he's not ready to comprehend what that means. This is not a Messiah who comes to save his people from suffering but to enter into their suffering with them and for them, to bear the cruelest of human treatment, to show love so fully 
that he would go even to his death, trusting in God for resurrection. When we say Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is our Savior, we may forget that his was a road of suffering, a road of being rejected, not celebrated. And as we will hear next time, that's a road on which he calls us to follow him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we have a hard time understanding you when you speak in parables. And we have a hard time receiving your word when you speak plainly. Hard truths that are difficult to bear. Peter did not understand at this point, yet he would come to understand. We pray that you would work in our hearts to help us understand your way, your way to salvation, the way of the cross. In your holy name we pray. Amen.